Hey guys, Dr. Gooden here. Today we're going to talk about four ways to make plyometrics more intense or less intense. Now all of this info can be found in the Essentials of Strength Training and Conditioning from the NSCA. So if you're studying to be CSCS certified, I recommend that you like the video and subscribe for more content. So there are four ways to alter the intensity of a plyometric movement. The first way is through points of contact. Now if we compare a two-footed jump to a one-footed jump, the two-footed jump or plyometric, we have two points of contact and it allows for a more stable and a wider base of support. Because of this wide base of support, um, there's less of a stability component at the hips and at the ankles. You have more surface area in contact with the ground to disperse forces that you may be encountering during the plyometric exercise. And in general, athletes, uh, especially beginner athletes, tend to have better movement patterns and motor control with these two-footed jumps and landings because they're used to doing them. <clears throat> also, the muscular demands are lower because now we have the musculature of both legs able to produce a propulsive force but also to generate that eccentric force during the landing. If we go down to one point of contact, as in a one-footed jump, now we're reducing all of those things. We have less surface area, so there's more force per square inch in contact with the ground. A single limb is absorbing that um, impact, and the musculature of that single limb now has to compensate for the off-balance or asymmetrical load that it's feeling. So there's a greater stability challenge at the hips and at the ankles. Um, and overall it's a more intense exercise. Now the second way to increase the intensity of a plyometric ex exercise is speed. The faster the approach, the more intense the exercise. This is why something like a long jump is a very, very intense single plyometric event. The second way to modulate the intensity of your plyometric exercises is with speed. The faster the approach, the more forces you will encounter and the faster those forces are going to be transferred through the limb or the limbs that are in contact with the ground. Compare a single leg box jump where you're starting from a standstill to a high speed full approach long jump. Which one is going to be more intense? Well obviously the full approach long jump will have greater forces traveling through the body that you have to mitigate and you have to overcome using the stretch shortening cycle before you can propel yourself because of that high speed of the approach. The single leg box jump on the other hand, you're starting from a standstill and so the forces required during that stretch shortening cycle to slow your body down um, and then reverse the direction during the amortization phase are much lower than in that full approach long jump. Now the third way to alter the intensity of a plyometric exercise is to alter the height of the drill. The higher your body is, the more acceleration occurs due to, gra due to gravity. So if you're doing a box jump onto a higher box, obviously, obviously that's more intense because you have to jump higher, but what about a depth jump where you're stepping off of a box, impacting the ground, and then jumping again as rapidly as possible. The higher the box that you step off of, the more time that gravity has, the more distance it has to accelerate your body into the earth so that when you impact the earth, the forces that you encounter there are going to be greater. So if you want to increase the intensity of a hurdle hop drill, raise the height of the hurdles that the athletes have to navigate. If you want to increase the intensity of a box jump or a depth jump, increase the height of, a bo of the box. And finally, the, the fourth and final way to um, alter the intensity of a plyometric exercise is with body mass. Now, that said, we can't just alter our body mass at will, but this is important because we do work with athletes who may have greater than average body mass uh, due to their position. Let's say you're working with an offensive lineman. Well, you're probably not going to have that individual do the same height of depth jumps as you would maybe a 100 meter sprinter. And yet both of them might require some form of plyometric exercise, but we need to be aware that the greater the person's body mass, the more intense that plyometric exercise will be for them. Now, one way you can alter um, a plyometric to make it more intense is by putting a weighted vest onto an individual or by using some sort of external implement like a dumbbell that they might be holding during the plyometric. But we need to use caution with this as oftentimes an athlete will be able to complete the movement, but it may increase their potential for injury due to the increased demands on the connective tissues with that extra load that they may not be used to. All right, I'm gonna show you a few of these plyometric exercises and because we're in a quarantine, and I can't get to the gym or the weight room or the track. I will just do these with what I have in my garage gym. All right, let's do it.